Okay, the job at hand is to cobble any sort of remote trigger switch for my Bolu 6008S. Since it's an older camera, things like the remote trigger switch are very hard to find these days, and this is very helpful when you want to put the camera on a tripod and um, you aren't reaching up underneath here to actually trigger the camera. Um, this here is the remote uh, trigger port. It is basically an electrical one. Some cameras have a mechanical one. This particular model has an electrical one. And my guess was that that was a 1 8 inch mini jack. And I rooted around in some stuff and I found a 1 8 inch mini jack. And of course you would want it to be two conductor, which I was lucky enough to find an adapter, which goes to RCA, but it has a two conductor mini jack, which is sleeve and a tip uh, one conductor two conductors and that goes firmly right in there and i found a rca connector and i bared the ends and to test it to see if it would actually trigger the camera i put them together and i took the ground um, set the camera set the camera into motion lock that and if i run this Direct this ground wire directly across the hot, it should trigger the camera. And we can see that it does. So that was my test, so that I would know that this would actually work. The object now is just finding a decent suitable, like a suitable switch to go on the other side, which I did. Here is a switch. It's kind of an antique bat handled, like a toggle switch with a sturdy off on tells you which is which and um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to wire that the polarity for that if I get it wrong it'll be um, trial and error on that one anyways so let's get started I've got this piece of junk wire lead which should do the trick just fine and like I say this is just a quick and dirty remote trigger switch I've got some shrink tube um, here Let's go ahead and bear the ends of my switch they are paired twist them up really nicely so that we don't get any strands of wire sticking out there's this now the lead of wire which is a three conductor. This is just rack wire from a rack install. And it has three conductors, which is a, a red, a black, and a just a stainless steel drain or a ground wire. I'm just gonna cut that off because I don't need it. Out of the way. Now I'll see if I can bear a little of these. start over do a little bit longer there are the three leads I'm gonna cut this one because I just need two conductors for this and I'm going to bear the ends of this Twist those up real good. <clears throat> All right, there are our protagonists right there. We're gonna put those together, hopefully in the right order. Let's see here. Oh, it actually won't matter because it's either opened or closed, this circuit. Now what do we want to do, whenever I solder, I like to tin the leads really good first, which involves putting a little solder flux. I dip them in the solder flux just ever so gently so that when I go to 
put some solder on these, the solder flux just draws the solder right into the wire and I don't have any problems later. Let's see here, all right, my soldering iron is hot. And the solder is just drawn right into the strands of the wire. And both of the leads are <clears throat> prepared. Are right, you gonna do the other one now? Just sort of dip them a little bit in the gooey stuff. And this is rosin based flux. Don't make the mistake of getting acid flux, which is for plumbing because it'll, if you use acid-based flux on your joints, it'll, it'll eat up your wires. It'll cause a corrosive effect on your solder joints. It's, so there are two kinds of this flux, and this flux is rosin-based, which I believe is from the trees. All right, so here are our two tinned leads. We're going to put, um, Let's go ahead and put a couple of pieces of shrink tube over them. <clears throat> and it doesn't really matter which way we put them together because this circuit, as I said before, will be either opened or closed. It's not a polarity thing. It is on the off-on part, but that's... I'll flip it around the other way. All right, so I was lazy and didn't make a vise for this, but... to pick up a little bit more solder. All right, there are our two joints. And I always test them by tugging on them now because you want to break them now, not out in the field. Try to get them to break now. If they're going to break, break them now. And give them a hell. All right. So now let's just go ahead and slip the heat shrink over each of the connections and get out my trusty dusty Vidal Sassoon super hot air dryer. better I didn't I was lazy and did not get out my heat gun but we'll cheat and you can use a lighter if you if you're good at it just keep the flame off of it and just use a little of the heat a bit more all right so now at the other end I'm 
I'm gonna have to determine what's open and what's closed and use my multimeter for that the continuity tester multimeter whatever you want to call it bear the ends of this Might as well tin them. They are suitably prepared for joining to our connector. All right, so this is what we have so far. All right, now I'm going to pull out my multimeter and check the continuity. And see when the circuit is open and closed. Okay. So is this circuit... How did I solder it? I have the switch in the on position. As you can see, it's in the on position. What is this going to tell me when I connect these together? It's in the on position, so that's, oh, that only makes sense because I haven't got it joined together to anything yet. So, what I want to do now is connect that to here. First, I'll need to get the junk off of this thing. Ready to go. <clears throat> and I would think that this one goes right in the middle of there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim a little bit of that off first because I don't need all of it. I want to make sure I get the housing within the strain relief, the cable relief part of it right here. So I had to trim off a little of the red one because it was bottoming out in there. All right, I think it would be important for me to put some solder in that since there isn't much. Funny. <clears throat> now, I'm going to just sort of fake this without a vise again. Boy, you can really never have enough vices. Got it sort of <clears throat> pinned in there, but I think I should put a little bit more solder on it, so. Alright, 
That's nice. <clears throat> now it's just a matter of getting this ground soldered to the little wing right there, which I don't need. It looks like I don't need all of this here. Let's see if I can fold it, fold it around. Sort of it, but not quite it. There. I'll just trim it a little bit. Then I'll be able to join it right where the other one was joined. Doing all this without a vise, it really makes it quite a bit easier if you have some way to hold things down. Even if you tape things down and use little boxes and things, I've been very creative without a vise before, but I'm definitely using all of those skills now. And it really does help to tin things first because solder happens much faster. And when you're working without a vise, you want it to happen nice and fast. All right, so I would call that quick and dirty. Let's just go ahead and roll this around. This is not the way to use these tools, frankly. I just gotta test it and see if this does what I think it's gonna do. All right. All right. Let's put this in there first. Lock that. Does this trigger the camera? Sure does. And the on is in the correct spot. On is up, off is down. And it, I would say that's a success. The prototype is done. There you have it.